A few months ago, I restarted a project that I had been previously working on that basically lay dormant in a box for a couple of years to make a new controller for a Campagnolo EPS 11-speed uh, derailleur system. So the idea being that you could make it do whatever. You could turn it into a 12-speed theoretically or a 10-speed or you could have it wired or wireless. But basically, I want to make a, a little controller that would drive it and keep everything open. I dubbed this project EPX, so X for, it's just a variable. I'm finally getting back to that project now. In those most recent videos, I explored some of the derailleur performance aspects with regards to various different batteries and the boost circuit that I had intended to use. Uh, the idea was to take a 1S, so a single cell, and boost it to 3S voltages and then drive the pack. Well, that worked pretty well. Uh, testing some random batteries I had here from various different projects, I stumbled into some very small batteries that I didn't think were going to perform well. However, they were high current and lithium high voltage, so a little bit of an extra voltage boost there. And they basically showed me that there's performance being left on the table with that derailleur. Those derailleurs could shift harder and faster than with any of the batteries I had. Now, given the only real reference point I have is an old V3 power unit. So that kind of rattled my idea. And one of the primary motivating factors of going to a 1S with a boost is charging. It's very easy to charge a single cell from five volts. It's just a linear regulator down. But in reality, depend, depending on how you want to do it, either you're going to end up with a boost in the charging circuit or you're going to end up with a boost on the derailleur. So I had to weigh those options in that. So as a bit of a refresher, I had already built a charging solution for the Campagnolo EPS system. Uh, I called it microcharge. The idea being instead of that big brick that you had to bring around that you either needed AC or 12 volts, it was designed uh, conveniently for, for teams so that they could charge it in vehicle. Um, but, but we've kind of progressed past 12 volt sources. We, we have 5 volt and USB-C PD and all this stuff everywhere. Um, so my microcharge is basically a bit obsolete. And there is apparently 36 people waiting for me to build them. Um, I doubt even if I built them I, I'd actually sell that many, but I don't plan to build them because the parts are actually kind of stupidly uh, expensive when most of these parts can be replaced by something much easier. So with that, I'm going to show you now how to build the Microcharge 2. And it's very simple. It's incredibly simple. We only need three parts. You're going to need this USB-C boost charger for three SLs. Uh, probably the one amp one is the safest one to get. You're going to need the appropriate M5 style cable, four pin, male, and you, you don't want to connect around the other end. But if you have to, you have to. And a single 47 kilo ohm resistor. That's it. Now we can build microcharge too. Um, maybe eventually I'll update this and put up a 3D printed housing, but I, I haven't done one yet. So as a bit of a refresher on the EPS system, there are four wires. You really only need three of these, but there's going to be a power wire, or I should say a pack positive wire, the ground, one that connects to a 10K thermistor that is then connected on the other end to ground in, inside the battery pack, and a 12 volt auxiliary. We can discount that 12 volt auxiliary because we don't really need it. So that 47 kilo ohm resistor, what we want to do is we saw our one end to the pack positive side, and then we solder the other end to the cable for the thermistor side. And the reason we do this is because that'll give us about 2.2 volts. And I've opened uh, EPS chargers and I've measured the voltage it uses or it sends out. And it usually ends up being, um, it works as a voltage divider of 47 kilo ohms. 10 kilo ohms depending on the temperature and then 
that voltage, if it gets too high or too low, will disconnect from charging. Uh, generally connects to charge for a pretty wide range. So I've tested as low as one to as high as 2.5 volts. And, and so the 47 kilo ohm for most of the pack charge will keep us well within that range. And that is required to activate the EPS system, tell it, hey, a charger's connected, please let me connect to the battery. Because there is a internal connection in the, I think it's in the power unit, to let that power flow through. So we need to be able to supply power to the thermistor. That's how it detects and needs to be the right voltage. If you put it, if you wire it directly, you could blow out, blow out something or it likely won't let you charge. So 47 kilo ohms, uh, somewhere around there, plus or minus a little bit is okay. That's it. Once you've wired it together, like I've shown, uh, it should charge and i've i've hooked up to my uh, power supplies and i've measured it with my multimeter and it seems to work just as good as my previous microcharge i haven't seen any issues with it it has some built-in safety features just just your basics though but one of the ones that i find uh, is very important is the timer cutoff so hooking it up to a dummy load after several hours it will disconnect this is kind of important because a lot of those cheap chargers you buy, especially for cameras and stuff, um, one of the most dangerous ones I found are the cheap three-pack holders for GoPros. They don't have a timer cutoff, and so they keep applying voltage to the battery so long as they're plugged in. And if you leave them for a few weeks to a couple of months like I did, thinking that they were just going to keep showing green, saying that they were charged, all my genuine GoPro cells were destroyed. They all bloomed up in size. So this charger actually has a cutoff for that for safety. It has an over voltage protection, um, but no under voltage protection. However, the pack does have overcurrent, over voltage, under voltage protection in it. I've disassembled them and looked at the protection ICs. There's a, a couple little annoyances about using this cheap charger. I mean, one, it's cheap. Uh, it's probably not the most reliable thing, but the bigger thing that I found is it's what's called, uh, actually, I don't actually remember the name, but it's the opposite of synchronous, um, I guess asynchronous. But instead of using a MOSFET so that when the voltage goes out from the boost, it just uses a diode. And this is the most common way all the boost circuits you look up online. However, that means there's a voltage drop and there's current running through it and that diode gets hot. So the inductor gets hot, diode gets hot, and it's less efficient. So you're, you're wasting a little bit of power there. But given how small the battery pack is in the EPS system and how tiny this is, yeah, it's pretty fine. It doesn't get uncomfortably hot to touch. So it's within the 30 to 40 C range. Um, so generally pretty fine. So, I mean, if you are in a situation where your current battery pack is destroyed or you need something for travel, this might be a, a genuine option for you. Um, I'm certainly not going to make any more of the microcharges. Uh, I've got circuit boards, but like a lot of people can't solder the small components. They are leadless um, and two by two millimeters. So a bit tough for most people, but hopefully you find this useful. Um, and hopefully in another few months, I'm actually going to obsolete this microcharge too with something pretty intelligent that's designed for the EPX, but also for a lot of my general charging needs. So with that, thanks for watching.